Hello everyone! Today I'm gonna talk about the importance of the baseline grid in Elementor. So today I'm not about to teach you any new effects but rather provide a precious piece of information on how to improve the layout, how to master typography with one simple trick. I can guarantee that embracing the baseline grid completely changes your perspective when it comes to web design. At the end I'll show you how the baseline grid fits to the latest Elementor feature named the team style. First of all, what's the baseline grid? Well, the baseline grid is a technique that brings all the typography into the seamless relationship to each other by following the vertical grid where the bottom of each letter is positioned onto the grid line. Just imagine the piece of the line paper behind the text. And the end result is the text being perfectly organized in a perfect balance that is recognized as such even on a subconscious level, believe it or not. So what you can see on the screen right now is the sample composition that includes several different element types like pre-title, title, we got summary text, photo, regular text, footnote, and the button. And just by looking at it, you can see that there's nothing wrong with that composition. I mean, font sizes are pretty much okay, the spacing looks right, margins are fine too, etc, etc. But I've made that composition by following my own sense for design, so to speak, without taking the baseline grid into account. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to duplicate my composition column with all the content and redo everything by following the baseline grid. You'll be amazed how much mistakes I probably made by relying on my own quote-unquote sense for design. There's a little helper that I have included to steroids for Elementor add-on and which is named the baseline grid. It allows you to define your own grid size and choose the color that suits you best. So my grid size will have the base of four. This is equal to four pixels. It means that when it comes to the font size, line height, margin or padding, all of them must be dividable by four in order to maintain the balance and harmony. So from now on, I'll be doing the simple adjustment of the font size, line height and margins of all the composition elements in the right hand side column. So let's start with the pre-title. My pre-title will be, I don't know, 12 pixels. I could try to make it 8 pixels, but, it really, but it's really below the level of readability and since my grid base is 4, I'll simply add 4 on top of 8 and that's what gives me 12 pixels font size. Likewise, the line height will also be 12 pixels. But if I want to add more spacing, more line height, the next available value will be, what, 16 pixels, all right? Let's now handle the bottom margin. Uh, once again, my bottom margin should be dividable by four as well. And if I enter 16 pixels, I'll be good. May I use something like 20 pixels bottom margin? Sure I can. 20 divided by 4 is 5. May I go with something like 18 pixels? No f***ing way. You gotta stick to the grid size, buddy. Just ask yourself, is 18 dividable by 4 without a leftover? No, it's not. So the answer is no. And let's move on a heading now. The big one. Uh, I'll go with, I don't know, like 44 pixels font size. And... 48 pixels line height. Quite often the heading, font size and line height match but I'd like to give it just a little bit more space. And from the baseline grid point of view that 4 pixels atop of 44 is perfectly fine. When it comes to the bottom margin, let's select the bottom margin, let's define the bottom margin. I'll go with something like uh, let's say 28 pixels. And let's say that from now on, 28 pixels bottom margin may become my standard bottom margin, the big one. While the 16 pixels margin, the one I use with the pre-title, is going to become the standard small bottom margin. So I'm going to remember that for later. Okay, now I'm going to continue with adjustments of the summary text, the bottom margin of the image, text area, footnote, and the button. And all I have to do is to stick to the baseline grid and be sure that all the numbers I use are dividable by 4 because 4 is my grid base value. If my grid base is 8 pixels I have to be sure that any font size, line height or margin or padding is dividable by 8 not by 4, not by 2, 
even though it is, but by eight, all right? And now, while, while I'm doing all these adjustments, you can see what difference the baseline grid makes. Two columns side by side, identical content, identical composition, and the only difference is my imaginary grid. When it comes to the button, I will also adjust the font size and the padding. That's why I'm going to use, I don't know, 16 pixels for the top and the bottom margin and 28 pixels for the left and the right hand side margin. If there's a contact form or an unordered list or any other element here, I will try to make it fit my baseline grid. That's the whole point. At the end, I'll also make the column padding fit the grid, even though it's not a big deal in this case because I didn't add any background color to the column, but it would definitely make the difference if otherwise. And if I now make the preview, you can clearly tell which of these two columns is the winner. I can bet that each and every one of you chooses the right hand side column. It's simply because it feels like there's more balance to it. It's more natural. There's some hidden flow to it, right? At the beginning, I mentioned that the, that the baseline grid is, is the vertical grid where the bottom of each letter is positioned onto the grid line. And if I zoom the screen a little bit, you can say that this is not correct. That's not true. You can see that not all the text sits perfectly on, on a grid line. So why is that for? Well, you gotta know that we are not using the Photoshop, Illustrator, or any other pro application or, or whatever. We are using the browser. And for example, you cannot control the image height when it comes to responsiveness, and the image height might be like, I don't know, two pixels below the grid line, which means that all the content below the image will sit two pixels below the grid line as well, because the image is pushing it down. But no matter what, that minor offset is still persistent across the lines of text. You can see persistency. And what actually counts is the end result. Okay? So, you, so no need to be concerned about. And finally, how the baseline grid fits the Elementor feature name, the, the team style. It should be pretty much obvious that you want all of the headings, all of the, the paragraphs, all of the buttons or, or the form elements be persistent across all of the Elementor templates and, and pages. You definitely want to establish the baseline grid only once instead of doing it for each and every page or the template that you create. It wouldn't make sense, right? That's why you should go to the team style and apply everything I mentioned in this tutorial to your body text, all the heading text, buttons and form elements, everything available on a team style panel. You can think of it as defining a global style sheet visual way. And that's pretty much it. I'm sure that this tutorial will make you think twice when it comes to typography or web design in general, because with the baseline grid, you cannot make a mistake. There's a chance that you cross the line of proportion, but even if that's the case, this proportion might seem like an honest mistake. So thanks for watching, thanks for all the support, peace and love.